It's enough that the bed bugs and lice sat there and ate my brother to death, but the neglect hurts me the most. Several family members of LaShawn Thompson recently spoke at a press conference to express their hurt and their anger after learning that their brother and loved one was severely neglected at a Fulton County jail. And as a result of that neglect, his death has now been ruled a homicide by a new independent medical review. Still with me talking about it all is attorney and NAACP president for the Georgia State Conference, Gerald Griggs. Uh, attorney Griggs, the family attorneys uh, and along with that independent medical review are calling uh, LaShawn Thompson's living conditions a torture chamber. That's 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 the framing. And we know that the sheriff has made some immediate changes as a result. Of course, those photos were leaked and it just looked completely unconscionable. Um, do you think that those things are going to help change the situation there in Fulton County jails? I hope it will. Uh, but again, the deplorable conditions that Mr. Thompson was living in. And again, this was for 93 days that he was living in these conditions. And we didn't find out about it until his lawyers released the photos. Uh, this happened back in September. So hopefully now there's a full investigation, things will change. But he should have never been living in these type of conditions. And it's solely on the Fulton County Commission and the sheriff to take concrete steps to alleviate what's happening at the jail and provide for humane conditions for all inmates. LaShawn should have never, ever been allowed to lose 30 pounds and to be eaten alive by bed bugs. Yeah, hence the malnutrition that was cited in that new uh, independent autopsy. Now, let's talk about the, the legal. You talked, uh, Attorney Griggs, about how you and your uh, office are looking to see criminal um, charges against those that are responsible in terms of the jailers, the chief jailer, and this isn't just. Let's talk about the civil aspect. Uh, I, I, I Obviously, flagrant uh, constitutional rights being violated here, civil rights uh, as well, I would submit. Uh, do you expect the family to be filing a civil lawsuit? Absolutely. They have some of the best lawyers in Georgia, one of the best lawyers in the country, in Ben Crump and, and Michael Harper, and we fully expect that a civil rights uh, violation uh, a civil rights lawsuit for wrongful death will be filed uh, very soon. Uh, but our main focus at the NAACP is to make sure moving forward that people's civil rights are protected in the detention center and to make sure that there's full funding of our mental health facilities uh, because we have a crisis. LaShawn Thompson underscores that. There have been numerous uh, incidents of police-involved deaths, both in the jail and in custody uh, shootings uh, that have heard, occurred to individuals with mental health distress. So we're focused on that. Indeed. Uh, very strong call to action there. Now, let me ask you about the autopsy that was performed uh, by Dr. Roger Mitchell, board certified forensic pathologist and chair of pathology at Howard University. He was also the chief medical examiner for Washington, D.C. for seven years. Um, lots of credentials there. We talked about, you know, the conflict, potential conflict around these two competing findings, but do you think that the credentials of this independent autopsy will be, will, will this go a long way? I think so. You, you're dealing with one of the best pathologists in the country who's extremely credentialed, as you noted, uh, that's done a thorough analysis of the case and, and made sure that we knew the manner and cause of death and also made sure we understood the health conditions, uh, pre-existing health conditions and the current uh, health analysis of this case. So I think his credentials and his thorough report uh, will stand uh, any type of uh, thorough vetting in court and will ultimately lead to charges. Excellent. Now, uh, it can't be presumed that LaShawn Thompson was the only detainee that was subject to these horrific conditions. Uh, now that this has come out, people have seen these photos and the like. Do you expect other families, um, current or former inmates, to come forward about their experiences in these horrific conditions? Absolutely. And one of our partners, the Southern Center for Human Rights, uh, has been chronicling the issues of the jail, has sued numerous times. So we know LaShawn Thompson is not the only one. He's not the only one on that wing of the psychiatric ward in the jail uh, that suffered from an infestation of, of, of insects. And so we know that more people will come forward, more people have come forward, and more people need to come forward as there is a inhumane conditions that are happening in the jail that have to be dealt with immediately. 
Absolutely. Uh, now, again, we have talked about the fact that a lot of people, uh, that most of the people that are being uh, impacted here by these horrific conditions have not even been convicted. They are pre, this is pretrial stuff that we're talking about. Uh, what needs to change, uh, Attorney Griggs, I guess, when it comes to, like you say, the, the sheriff's office, the commissioner's office, to make sure that this type of death, this unnecessary, uh, apparently homicide, does not happen again? Well, first, we need to treat people with compassion and care. An individual that's merely charged with a crime or accused of a crime has basic constitutional rights. We need to focus on criminal justice reform so we don't have an older, overcrowded jail. We need to fo focus on humane conditions so we don't have a mental health crisis. And we need to drop the rhetoric about a rise in crime. There is no rise in crime. There was a delay based on the pandemic that caused a backlog. That's the reason why we couldn't get to trials in Metro Atlanta. Uh, so those things need to be addressed. But first and foremost, we have to make sure the jail is sanitary and clean so that people that are in the custody and control of the sheriff will live to reach their court dates. We need to address the bond situation. People that are charged with low level offenses don't need to be faced with bonds they can't reach. We need to treat every individual as innocent until proven guilty, and bond is an essential factor to make sure that they get back to court. Before we go, Attorney Griggs, I want to talk about the fact that this secondary autopsy was uh, paid for and amplified by former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. Talk about how important it is to get that level of publicity and amplification to cases like this. It's absolutely important. It's one of the reasons why Colin Kaepernick took the stance that he did. Uh, because families don't have a voice and he's lent his platform and his resources to give them a voice and to give the truth about what happened to LaShawn Thompson. Absolutely. Attorney Gerald Griggs of the Georgia and Atlanta NAACP, thank you so much for joining us here at The Grio. We'll keep our eyes on this case. Now, a lot of comedians use their own life and stories as a part of their stand-up routines. Well, we're going to introduce you to one comic who's using his therapy sessions as part of his material. That's next on The Grio. Coming into Watch Hugh Jackman and Halle Berry in Swordfish, right here on The Grio.